Prior to the introduction of DeFi, centralized finance was the standard of cryptocurrency trading. In the centralized finance, the CFI, all cryptocurrency orders are handled through a centralized exchange. This means that you don't have the private key that gives you access to your wallet. Furthermore, the centralized platform decides the exchange pairs and how many commissions you have to pay to trade. However, by having a custody of your funds, the CFI company provides both security and often refunds for their users in the event of hacker attack. Binance and Coinbase, to name a few of the most famous, to go great lengths to ensure users' funds are protected. Furthermore, CFI platforms usually come with a high intuitive and easy to use interface. New buys can easily get started on these platforms and use their many services. The goal is to expose cryptocurrencies to as many people as possible. And CFI platforms do well in this area. How to use our crypto and what are the risks? BlockFi, Celsius Network, Nexo, Ledin are the most popular cryptocurrency lending platforms. As a client, you can provide your liquidity to these platforms, which in return lend it in in exchange for an interest that is shared with you. Here we already observed the first risk. We are the ones who give our liquidity, who take full exposure to the risk of insolvency. They simply act as intermediaries. These platforms need our liquidity to be able to keep their business model active. But what exactly do they do with our crypto? Let's see some examples together. First example is the cash and carry trade. Some institutional figures can turn to CFI platforms using their funds for cash and carry trades to be able to buy a specific crypto on spot and at the same time to go short on a derivative of the same crypto, typically a future, to gain the spread between the two prices. We have also the exchange arbitrage. They can use cryptocurrency to take advantage of the price differences between exchanges. Or the margin pool. Exchanges can borrow their liquidity from these companies for their margin pools. Or the collateralized loan. Borrowing a crypto asset using another asset as a collateral. For example, asking USDC from BTC as a collateral. And finally, the BTC Grayscale Arbitrage. Grayscale is a regulated trust in the United States that holds Bitcoin and gives exposure to Bitcoin investors who want to use the traditional brokerage methods. Every six months, they sell part of their funds in order to win the profit and distribute them to investors. Conclusions We should always be careful with these loan services. In case in which these platforms are remotely insolvent towards us, they have not to put a single penny of their capital at risk, and after covering all their costs, they will surely make sure to reimburse the investors in some way, perhaps in full, perhaps partially. Let's remember the regulated markets and how many people never saw their money after a bank went bankrupt. Let us now think of the crypto market which is not regulated. It could very well happen the same. There is no type of protection from the authorities, at least for the moment. But the beauty of crypto is also this, being free to choose and at the same time taking all the responsibility of the case. Complete responsibility, of course, but also personal growth and awareness of the dangers. Bitcoin and altcoin in an interest-free hardware wallet or a C5 platform to accrue interest. The first option should not automatically exclude the other. Both can coexist, actually. It's up to each of us to choose the right allocation percentages based on our risk profile.